Hey guys, in this project we're going to be building a responsive CSS timeline. Alright, so basically we'll have a line down the middle here which has two points, one of two points. It can have a year, which will be this big round image with the year, and then these smaller points in between the years, which will then branch off to um, these areas with, uh, we just have a date, we have a heading and a paragraph. Uh, of course you could put whatever you want here. Um, this, this could be anything from an employee, an employment timeline, places that you've worked. It could be uh, a personal timeline. It could be kind of like a diary, I guess. Or you could even put images in here and it could be an image timeline. Alright, so I just figured it was uh, something different. Um, something different than, than a standard web page that's really boxy. Um, this veers away from that, so uh, that's that's why I wanted to do this. All right, so uh, the file structure is very simple. We just have our main index HTML uh, document. Then we have our CSS folder, which has one style sheet, and then an image images folder, which has a few images. So we're using um, line PNG is going to be the the line down the middle it's a very small image we're going to actually just repeat it along the y-axis um, you always want if you can use a small image and repeat it you always want to do that rather than having one big image because obviously it takes up a lot more file space then we have our point big which is going to represent the years on the timeline and we have point small which is going to represent the, the um, individual events and then we have arrow right and arrow left Okay, so you can see our little blurbs here. They have an arrow pointing to the the image in the middle, and that's about it. We're going to use HTML5 syntax. Um, we'll use the header and the footer tag, and then these are just going to be divs off to the side. We'll have quite a few nested divs, um, and that's it. So let's go ahead and create our project folder. I'm just going to call this timeline. Okay, and we're going to need our HTML file. And our CSS folder. And also an images folder. All right, and I'm just going to grab the images. Bring those over. Feel free to use your own images if you uh, have experience with Photoshop or anything like that. All right, so let's open up the HTML page as well as we need to create a CSS file. All right, so let's start with the HTML. We're going to throw in the doc type. This is going to be an HTML5 document. And we need our head area. And we'll just put a title in here. Oh, and I didn't show you, this is also going to be responsive, which is a really important part of it. So if we take this and make it smaller, you can see that it's completely responsive. The timeline has moved to the, all the way to the left. And then we have one row of events. All right. So title, say responsive CSS timeline. And like I've said in the past, um, everything that you build any kind of interface HTML document it should you should always try and keep it responsive alright it used to be that getting a, a responsive version of your website was kind of an add-on or an extra but now it's it's basically required now I mean you don't want to have a site that looks like crap on a mobile device uh, a phone or a tablet so just try to always keep that in mind always try to have a, a responsive version of your project um, and if that's not possible then maybe build two different versions one for mobile and one for desktop so 
it's our basic uh, HTML5 structure. So the first thing I want to do, actually we need to add in, this is going to be responsive, so we need to add, um, we need to add our viewport. Okay, so we'll say meta name is going to be viewport and content is going to be width equals device width and initial scale is one. All right, and then let's go ahead and link our style sheet. Say link um, rel equals style sheet. And that is going to be in the CSS folder. Style.css. And the type will be text slash CSS. Okay, so that's all we need for our head area. All right, so the body. Um, let's take a look at it real quick. So we're going to have a header, but I want to have the header go all the way across. We want this the, the background here, the color, to go all the way across the entire browser. But we do also want a container. We want everything to be contained um, about here. All right, so what we need to do is we're going to create a container class which we can use multiple times. For instance, we'll use it in the header, and then we'll use it in the body to keep everything in the middle. All right, so we're going to have more than one, so it'll be a class, not an ID. All right, and we're going to put that inside of the header. Okay, so we'll say header. All right, and then inside this, we'll create a class called container. And if you've used Twitter Bootstrap or a framework like that, then this probably looks familiar to you. So this header is just going to have an H1 tag. All right. So after the header, I'm going to create a section, okay, which is, which is an HTML5 element. All right, and I'm going to have another div here with the class of timeline. And actually, I'm going to make this an ID because it's just one object. We're not going to create multiple timelines. All right, and this is where we're going to set the background image to be this line, okay? So this line in the middle. And we're also gonna set a minimum height, all right? So that even if there are no uh, events, it's still gonna show the line. And let's see, what do we need inside of, inside of the timeline? We're gonna create um, a block, okay? So we're gonna say div class equals tl-block. All right, so a block is going to represent um, anything that we add to the line, okay? So this area here is going to be a block, but it's going to be a year, okay? This next one is going to be a block. It's going to be an event, okay? Then we have another event, and then another event, and then a year and then another event and so on. So all of these are gonna be known as blocks. All right, and then inside the block, we're gonna specify if it's a year or an event. So we'll say div class, <coughs> excuse me, equals TL year, because the first one that we're gonna build is a year. All right, and inside that, we're gonna have just an empty div tag, not an empty div tag, but no class or ID or anything. And we're just going to have the year. All right. And then that's all that there is to a block. Okay. So this is a year block. So let's go ahead and just put some comments here so we know. So this is T 
PL year. All right. And this is the block. This div is the timeline. Everything will go in the timeline div. So we can actually kind of separate this. All right, so that will take care of our first year. Next, we'll have an event. All right, so let's create another block. All right, so this isn't going to have a TL year div, it's going to have a TL event div. So, D. Is going to be TL event. Okay, now inside of the event div, we're, we need to specify if it's going to show up on the left hand side or the right hand side. So we're going to have another div. And this is going to be called uh, event. Let me see what I want to do here. Let's put the first one on the left side. So it's going to be called event L. Okay, and then inside of there, we're going to have another div tag. And then in there, we want to put whatever we want for content. In this case, it's going to be a heading. Um, actually, do we even need a heading? Yeah, we have a heading. So we'll just put event one. And then a paragraph. And I'm just going to grab some sample text real quick. Put that in there. Now we also want to add the date. You can see here we're going to put the month and the day. We don't need to put the year because you'll see what year we're in. Um, but we want to do that and we're going to do something different. We're going to use the HTML5 time tag which we haven't used before. All right, which is obviously meant for time. And we're going to put this right inside of the H3 tag. All right, so we want to say time and then it's going to take an attribute called date time. And this can be used for different things, but you want to format it like this. You want the year, the month, and the day. And we can also even put the time at 11 o'clock. All right, and then we can put the text March 12th and with the end tag. Okay, so that's really all there is to an event. Okay, so we have a year and an event. Everything is going to be one of those two things that we that we do here. Okay, so let's put another event. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. Okay, so now we'll say event two, and let's just change the date here to let's see, we'll say September tenth which is my birthday. So 2012, September 10th, and we'll say six o'clock. Now I want this one to be on the right side, so all I'm gonna do is change this div, this class, to event R. All right, and then we'll put one more for 2012. We'll keep it at the, on the left side, and I'm gonna change this to December, 22nd and change this to 3 all right so that will be the events for 2012 okay now let's just take a look at this real quick it's not going to look very pretty okay so you can see that um, we do have some styling here we have some margin you can see that everything is separated and that comes from the um, the user agent style sheet. So basically the browser's default styling. All right, and that's the reason we use resets 
is to so we can actually start it with a clean slate as opposed to um, what the different browsers use for styling in this project we're not going to use a reset file but I do want to reset the margin and padding on everything so I'm actually going to do that right now okay that's the only CSS I'm going to do in this video but basically we're just going to use this global asterisk and say margin zero and padding zero all right so now if we take a look reload now all that spacing is taken away so no matter what browser we view this in it's going to look like this right now okay let's go back to the html and i'm going to put in another year so i'm going to grab a year block And this will be 2013. Let's grab an event. And you can just see how clean that this code is, this HTML. You know, it's all the same. We have a block with which is an event or a year. And it's really important to keep your documents organized like that. All right, so this one, let's see, we'll change this. Say January 24th, actually say January 12th, which is my daughter's birthday. Okay, so change this to 2013. This is going to be 1 12. So event 4. And let's see, what did we put this on? Well, we'll put it on the right. We'll just alternate right, left. Okay, let's do another one. This one will be on the left, and we'll change this to April, we'll say April 22nd, and five. Um, let's see, let's change this here. All right, now let's put another year. And this will be 2014. And let me just put in, I'm just going to copy these two year blocks. Okay, so let's see, let's do February, we'll do February 17th. This should be 14. Did I change? This one should be 13. Okay. Let's make this one here. May 2nd. Which is 502. And let's see, what do we have? Four, five, this will be six. And this will be seven. Oh, I didn't change this one, so this should be two, seventeen. All right, so let's save that. Take a look at our HTML. Okay. So basically, in the next video, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do our CSS, which is gonna take this to this. All right. So just seeing that just just really reminds you how powerful CSS is and how important it is when it comes to uh, information display. So we will do that in the next video.